Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're gonna talk about Programmable Logic Controller or PLC. So let's dive right into it. Well, before we understand PLC, we have to understand what exactly is the need for such equipment. Well, you have to understand this aspect about humans is that we don't like repetitive tasks. Fundamentally, we humans are very bad at it. If you are doing something very simple, for example, let's say uh, you are given a wrench that is like if you torque it five times, it's GG. If you uh, torque it six times, you may break the bolt or you may weaken it. Or if you only torque it four times, it could unbolt. So like all you have to do is just like do this five times. Here's the deal no matter which kind of person you find in the market they will make a mistake fundamentally we do not like repetitive task so that's the whole point and specifically if you are talking about a factory that has to be run for like let's say 10 years or something like that most of the time the reality is it will be mundane and repetitive task and we cannot do that reliably enough now sometimes all that will do is like let's say you have a you know broken shoe or sometimes a uh, you know uh, unsealed uh, properly done uh, basically clothes but sometimes it could also mess up powerful equipment which equipments will have to go to hospital or things of that nature so fundamentally having that weak vulnerability is not acceptable in many high risk scenario another aspect is humans have very lot uh, you know lot of downtime for example let's say you took out a loan to make a factory for a village now here's the deal uh, the loan you have to pay in a certain amount of time that time will not be extended you have to pay it now there is 24 hours in a day and let's say your factory equipments can actually practically speaking they can work 24 into 7 into 365 and only you have to shut it down let's say once a week but your personnel cannot do that so you have to have a scenario where it's like either you have three shifts or you have to automate it so that's the whole reality we have a lot of downtimes and those downtimes do not only stem for like let's say you know work hours of six uh, six and eight hours you also have other issues like you know holidays uh, sick leaves things of that nature so fundamentally many scenarios we require 24 into 7 into 365 kind of production environment uh, we have to have something automating it. For example, your electrical substation, it cannot go down. There is no holiday for the workers who are maintaining electrical substation. So the substation have to be automated to a point where only minimal uh, human intervention is needed. So we used to do this, like this was a real thing. We used to have electrical subgrade in 1950s also. So how the heck we achieved that? We utilize what we call relay stations. Now these relays are quote unquote uh, predecessor to computers. So what computer actually is, is just a switch. What relay is? It's an electromagnetical switch. So we used to build complicated equipment. Now you can see amazing variants of this where people had like very complicated mechanical stuff. That's how uh, lift elevators basically were controlled basically. Okay, when to stop, when to start the motor, when to slow down the motor, when to like, there's a serious amount of complication that goes into that. Nowadays we are just like, I just program a microcontroller. Back in that day, like as in 1950, back in the day, uh, there was no other option. So fundamentally, a uh, lot of relay stations uh, were built for handling this sort of task. Some were uh, like in use for like a till early 2000 but reality is while these systems are reliable they do work and they are repairable they are really really not adaptable so fundamentally uh, to give you an example think of it this way you are an elevator manufacturer and you're like okay uh, my i want to make a system that works for let's say 10 story buildings to 20 story buildings. like some more of the less equipment is the same here's the to making the relay station you have to physically make a unique one every time every building you have to go to so that's very uh what we call unadaptable so and because of modern reality you have to have adaptability fundamentally created into the system otherwise production cost will uh, make you go bankrupt so how do we achieve this well we start with the component level like this is a very surface level idea but it should give you uh you know a fundamental understanding what exactly is going on so we start with psu now psu's job is basically take power from your mains and that could be 220 volt that is coming from two live wires uh, example usa or it could be 220 volt single phase from india or it could be somewhere else a heck even 440 volt if you have to so that's the whole point of psu take the live supply whatever you have and tone it down basically convert it to desirable dc now generally the dc that we are talking about here is generally 24 volt that does not mean all the equipment ever made only runs on 24 volt some are 12 volt some are 36 volt some are some unique voltage you get the point and that's the job of psu basically take the electricity filter it out manage it like uh, condition it and then give it to the actual computer now cpu is the control and logic center that's the whole point that's why this system is so adaptable you can find units it's like okay uh, in winter do this in summer do this you can't do that with relay station they're gonna behave exactly the same or you have to have another mechanism or some person who has to like you know change a uh, mechanical levers and gears is like okay this is january's apply this uh, punch card to run the machine like that which you which we used to do so you have the whole point the cpu takes care of that uh, logic part of it and then we come to input part 
without comp- uh, like if you just say computer do something it will the first thing it's going to ask you dude i do not know what's happening so you have to have feedback for the equipment basically if you have a motor it has to have feedback on that basically is the motor running first what rpm it's running on uh, what is temperature if it knows all that then only it can control it properly if it does not have the feedback on the data it's going to wreck the system so you have to have input that's the first requirement have the guard dynamic inputs then output now output is the part that allows quote and quote the cpu to control things output is what we call control authority over machines now what kind of machine we are talking about that depends on you that could be a light that could be electromagnet that could be a compressor that could be whatever have you that has to be controlled basically these all these machines in a factory they are quite dumb but if you give a central intelligence they become smart simply because computer is basically reading the data basically quote and quote seeing the environment and uh, commanding over it. basically control authority is done by output department then all these things these are physically small things because again computer has been miniaturized so from 1960s onwards uh, people started to develop this puppy and by ni- two, early 2000 these are that small that's how small these things are some are even smaller and people are working on making them even miniaturized so they come in quote unquote racks now this rack is a bit different than server rack so they have a slot on the back and you have to create it so uh, basically the idea is they created a cpu that is so over powerful that you can fine tune what you want to do with it. now you might be like why the heck come you want to do that here's the deal let's say you built a conveyor belt system do you know how many motors you have to have how many check systems you have to have you don't know until you build it now once you build it uh, then the problem would be like how the heck you find a system that works for you you don't have to worry about it it's modular you can basically say hey i need 28 input systems and i need let's say 10 output system Ta-da, you configure it or you could have something invert also you could have like hey i only need 10 de- input system but i need output like i need to control like a hundreds of system so you could do that that's the whole point and generally to accomplish that you will have all these things basically power supply cpu and input uh, cartridges output cartridges go into what we call backplane so this backplane will allow you to slot these things and that way you can fine tune it on your own now on your own is simply not a basically quote unquote a it's very rarely like a businessman CEO is going to go there and put there with the job of a technician there. But you get the point. Basically, companies like Siemens, they're going to manufacture the equipment and you can fine tune it. It's like, dude, I need this many input. I need that many output. It's modular. And then uh, early uh, earlier on, every company, every manufacturer that was developing this system, they had their own magic sauce, their own hoo-ha. And they all realized they are all stupid. So they all started to finally utilize computer equipments, basically uh, standards that were developed for computer. For example, one primary thing that they started to use is networking. And they started to utilize normal Ethernet system. Benefit, jacks are uh, widely available. Connectors are widely available. The whole switches are widely available. The standard has been standardized and they have been tested over thousands of of clients and millions of hours of use so uh, early in uh, 2000 people realized okay let's just utilize something that has already been built already been time tested let's not try to reinvent the wheel here so networking is now possible now the normal uh, programming and logic control system went to god tier level this allows you to have data gathering which allows you to monitor health over long periods of time which is very critical uh, and then you have master management now I will explain more about that because master management allows you to uh, go from something normal to like you can literally have an AI there and you can just have a person as a backup is like to a factory that uh, needs like five or six controllers they could have only one AI and one backup individual that's the whole point master overall now input and output that's the one thing that you have to understand this is what you are controlling you are controlling the inputs basically you are learning from input and you're controlling the output so this is what uh, we are talking about see and control look through the inputs and control the output now two core types you will always hear whenever you are uh, quote unquote in the market trying to buy these things it's analog and digital what does that mean that simply means digital r system that are binary and that only going to give you data is either on or off for example water tank uh, what will happen if you have a digital uh, sensor there it's going to say water yes or no it's not going to tell you how much water you have it's only going to tell you there is on or off you can have level sensors basically like you can have a level that is at minimum level uh, one other level at maximum level so all is going to say it is full or empty he's not going to say how what in the between now many times that's more than good enough let's say you want to figure out uh, if the motor is on or off a uh, sy- normal uh, binary system will work if you want to figure out like is the fan running or not normal on off system uh, feedback loop will work so most of the time digital is more than good enough but what if you actually want to feed off data it's like okay i want to know the motor is running or not that's awesome digital got you back but i also need to feed back the uh, rpm data i need to understand whether it's like you know ramping up or ramping down i need to control that one at that point in time you need analog data streams now analog basically Basically means ranged equipment and it has zero to hundred percent basically one to hundred percent depending on your equipment 
now that's what allows you to fine tune control basically it the your water type will go from hey instead of like you know uh, level like older systems you, you can easily find that they will have like five leds at five levels it's like you know they just put an on off switch on those leds at that tank levels but an analog system it will actually say okay 30 percent 32 percent 33 percent like it will show a very interesting range so and you can uh, already experience this if you buy arduino raspberry pi you will see all those pins and many of those pins are quote unquote analog other pins are quote unquote digital that same applies here it's basically turbocharged basically solid version of a uh, raspberry pi now add-ons uh, that's the whole point of this you get uh, basically when you go to a system like let's like, a direct system and they're gonna give you a cpu they're gonna give you a power supply and then they're gonna ask you how many inputs do you want what kind of inputs you want depending on your system basically siemens will have a bit different system uh, on digital will have a different system everybody will have that and based on your factory requirement based on your equipment requirement you're gonna find to this like hey give me relay output uh, give me 24 volt dc output uh, give me 24 volt dc input uh, give me 120 volt uh, 110 volt output so that's up to you you're gonna spec these things exactly how you want it and uh, you may be wondering like okay these equipments are quite small like this small how the heck is gonna control a let's say a 10 horsepower motor or 100 megawatt heating elements or things of that nature like especially used in a large industrial plant for metal melting it's not gonna do that it's like don't be crazy like this thing cannot uh, like you know turn on or off thousand ampere of electrical load so it's gonna trigger a bigger relay that's gonna do the job so that's the whole point so for big equipments they do not directly control these things they trigger a secondary relay that takes care of the heavy load so to say and those heavy loads are generally uh, have their own system it's like send control signal here into the system like a vfd vfd is not gonna be like okay uh vfd has to be opened up and then you're gonna plug in the wire it will have a simple serial port or uh, like you know direct port if you send analog data to this plug i'm gonna interpolate that into an analog range for the motor rpm and uh, this if you send it on that i will rotate it clockwise if you send it off i will rotate it counterclockwise you get the point there is a communication between heavy equipments and uh, these things they do not directly control everything it's just they can act as an authority basically they are acting as a person on there it's like you know twisting the knobs and things of that nature that's their job that's the whole point of input and output systems now let's understand the CPU aspect, the main brain of the system. That's why these systems are so powerful because processing nowadays is quite cheap. And not to mention, when you fundamentally think about it, it's not that much of a complex logic. However, if you have to actually do it on a uh, logic level, where it's like gate one, if gate one is open, you know, and if gate two is open, uh, trigger uh, gate number three. This exact like this exact thing happens inside your processor. But again, this is smaller than a human hair. So reality is processor allows you to have logic, complex logic. For example, you can literally have a feedback loop where it's like check the outside temperature and based on that turn on your air condition early on. So for pre-cooling, for example, you know for a fact the building will unlock for secu uh, like security reason at 9 a.m. It's like people will start to enter in at 9 a.m. Now you want to pre-cool the building. It's like, okay, calm down. Uh, so people starting work at nine they are comfortable okay everything is awesome but here's the deal that cannot be known you cannot just have a simple dumb value it's like okay start ac air condition one hour before that will not work because outside temperature will change now you could do that you can test it out one day and you're like okay worst case scenario is two hours i'm gonna start at two hours you're wasting electricity when you don't have to so you will have an outside air temperature it's like okay outside air temperature then you will also have other data points it's like outside humidity outside wind things all these things will control uh, what kind of input and output you need like that way you will utilize just enough amount of energy to keep the passengers keep the uh, basically equipment keep the whole factory in a comfortable scenario without like you know consuming too much or too little so that's the whole point of this cpu now this is the brain of it now these things you may think like okay what about uh, like do, can i buy a thread ripper on this can a ryzen 5000 on these things no they are quite simple however they are very robust they are designed in such a way that they will not go down no matter what happens they will not go down they will not have like okay this bug is there a blue screen of that that's not happening these things are controlling multi-billion dollar equipments or basically whole of our world including nuclear reactors so you get the point like they are built extremely simply it's like complexity is the enemy of reliability these things simple elegant heck many of the communication interface they go through optical isolators so even if you have a freaking lightning fall on the input or output side it will only blow up uh, that part it will not tamper with other systems so that's the whole point they are very simple and very robust that's why you are paying for that like, can you achieve all this logic all this uh, stuff with a raspberry pi technically speaking yes 
but here's the deal you cannot trust on that so and especially think of it as well let's say you have a giant aluminum factory and that has like you know uh, multi million equipment going through every day and do you really want to risk it on a raspberry pi so that's the whole point of it that's what you are paying for the robustness and they test it like the siemens uh, whichever manufacturer uh, general electric all these manufacturers they're going to test the hell out of it before they sell it to you and after the selling there would be a giant after uh, sales support also so there will be network and if you are talking about something very serious it's like okay they may even give you a basic level engineer on site and uh, there will be engineer on call senior level on engineer uh, on call for uh, critical stuff like uh, nuclear power plants or things of that nature so that's the whole thing is very robust very thoroughly tested and they are not complex that's the whole point they do not have like five six layers of things to it they are like i have to do one thing and i'm going to take care of it that's the whole point of it and they are very resistant to noise now what kind of noise we are talking about? every kind basically uh, if you look at the pcb of these things they are built much more robustly the reason for that is uh, this should not be compromised if humidity attacks it they should not be compromised if there is a lot of electrical noise let's say you have plasma uh, arc welding things of that nature going on that has a lot of electrical noise these things are designed in such a way that it can handle it the case they have that's also designed to reduce it the cabinet they have that's also designed to reduce they have multiple layers of redundancy so these puppies are built in such a way that you put it you forget it it's not going to randomly go boom like it has fuse on top of a fuse on top of fuse so it's like it's very unlikely that uh, all the system is going to go down in one go so that's the whole point and the logic of that is limiting factor of it basically cpu like your cpu could have a limiting factor it's like dude i can only control 300 channels you may channels as in like input and output you may be like hey dude for my factory i need 500 you have to update the cpu so that's what we are talking about in terms of cpu that's the core point of it now let's come to the god tier networking now networking that's the whole point the programmable logic control on its own is not that powerful but imagine it this way let's say you are talking about an ice cream factory you have multiple stages you have freezing station that actually makes the ice cream then you have packaging station that actually packages the thing and then you have a delivery system and all that jazz now what happens if you ha make one P uh, plc control or other no cpu can handle that as that's too many complexities so what you're gonna do is like okay freezing station you get your own plc controller and uh, freezing uh, packaging station you get your own plc but with networking you get a central authority basically you can connect each of them and they, they can easily talk to each other or you can have a central command station and in the command station you like dude all the system is under one central control authority and many times those central authority can be called as SCADA system so you hear these things like you know substation has SCADA system uh, reactor has SCADA system that's what they are talking about SCADA system itself does not do anything it controls the subsystem that controls the main systems so SCADA is directly basically uh, evolved version of a lot of PLC logic working together and SCADA system is like overview uh, effect of that. The reason why the overview is near, think of it this way, let's say you have one uh, substation, manufacturing assembly line that's feeding data to another, like feeding actual hardware. Let's say car manufacturing is like, okay, if the, for some reason, let's say uh, belt started to wear off and the motor uh, is running at lower RPM, something happened, let's say motor is running at lower RPM, so it will create a uh, void situation. Now, you don't want your machine to idle because it will consume too much power so it's like okay just turn it off for that time it knows for a fact that that station is lagging behind so it's gonna wait up to catch up all that requires you to have feedback from all these things and SCADA system itself cannot handle hundreds of feedback so all it's gonna do is like uh, how you see in NASA when they have like you know Capcom go uh, basically medicals go guidance go that's all that is happening SCADA system is just asking each PLC it's like tell your status it's like bro I'm good if something faulty happens the uh, system will forward an error message like to temperature over and that message will go to uh, individual that is uh, rich, mm, responsible for uh, maintenance and all that jazz and how important this thing is is the backbone of our modern world everything from electricity to water to power plants to everything is relying on that even your uh, basically giant uh, elevators so this is very critical technology it's not an optional technology it's a critical technology and then it's the job of automation engineer when you ever hear people like i'm an automation engineer what exactly they do sometimes they, they are responsible for doing this like they will go to a site they're like okay you want a factory system when you see like you know uh, elon musk is like okay i want to make a battery factory who is going to talk to he's going to talk to basically automation engineer automation engineer is going to talk to the mechanical guy is like okay how many motors do you want okay how many okay that many motors i cannot do that many control system like that's the job of it so networking makes this very simple system uh, practically speaking but combined all of that that's gg system 
so this was my presentation on programmable logic control i hope you liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friends that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching